Good afternoon all. Um, if I could uh, ask you to uh, stand and uh, we'll have the uh, we'll have the break. Leading off with, O oh Lord and giver of all good, with daily food, may Rotary friends and Rotary ways help us to see the all our days. Thank you. Be seated, please. Uh, I've, uh, I've been given the task of uh, being the MC this afternoon and I'm absolutely thrilled uh, uh, to perform that task in uh, two ways. Um, for those who I've not had the pleasure of uh, meeting, crossing paths with or uh, uh, exchange acquaintances, uh, I'm Boris Strzok. Uh, I'm the current president of the Rotary Club of Essendon, the home club of past president of Rotary International, Royce Abbey. Very briefly, I joined Rotary in 94, but was well aware of Royce Abbey's reputation, dedication and commitment to Rotary well beforehand. And I can say I was thrilled that a Aussie was uh, um, the Rotary International President, I thought that was uh, absolutely fantastic. And then to subsequently join this club um, um, instilled a lot of pride uh, in me, both personally and as a Rotarian. So uh, uh, enough about me. This is all about uh, welcoming everybody else here today. And uh, welcome Royce and Jean. <laughs> Ian Risley and Juliet. All present and past officers of Rotary International. Current DG, Ross Butterworth and Annette. Other current DGs present this afternoon. Um, Terry and Joan Barrett from Western Australia have journeyed all the way over. So uh, I'd like to also welcome Roy Savvy awardees. Um, it's, it's a marvellous award and uh, um, it, it just works so well. So welcome to Roy Sabby Awardees, Rotarians, friends of Rotary and guests. Um, welcome to um, the Roy Sabby 25th anniversary luncheon. We have several apologies. Um, International Past President DG Dennis Shaw and uh, PDG Keith Ryle are apologies. Um, I'd like to now call on DG Ross Butterworth to um, offer a toast. Thanks President Boris. And as Rotary Protocols will allow me, let me collectively pay our respects to all serving and past Rotary officers. But I'd also like to thank the Rotary Club of Essendon for the opportunity to be here and also for the honour of proposing the toast to Rotary International. From one man's idea, supported by his three colleagues with a need to broaden their business and social networks, our great organisation Rotary International was born and Paul Harris introduced vocational diversity into Rotary. Rotary International is a standalone organisation. It is in a group of one. It is special and Rotary International will always be the world's first service organisation but it remains the world's only vocational service organisation. In 1905 the organisation commenced as a vocational fellowship and today both those traits are amongst our greatest, greatest strengths and allow us as Rotarians to change lives. Let us all be very proud of our Rotary, for what Rotary does and for what Rotary stands for. Have faith in the knowledge that our collective efforts really do make a world of difference and we do change lives. As a great man once said, 
put life into Rotary, your life. In the spirit of friendship with the 1.2 million members in 34,000 clubs in over 200 countries, can I ask you to join with me, be upstanding and charge your glasses as we toast Rotary International to Rotary International. Thank you. To introduce uh, past district governor Cathy Roth um, to um, provide some personal reflections uh, and influences um, that Royce had on her life. In 1990, Cathy was uh, elected as charter president uh, of the Rotary Club of Geelong and served as uh, district governor for District 9780 for 2004 2005. Cathy's also chaired the Rotary Foundation and numerous committees. Please welcome Cathy. Thank you, President Boris. Honoured guests all, as previously acknowledged, and my very, very dear friend, past Rotary International President, Royce Abbey. Royce it's taken a long time, but for once, I've got the microphone ahead of you. <laughs> and thank you for allowing me to slightly break protocol. Uh, District Governor Ross kindly proposed a beautiful toast to Rotary International earlier, and that demands a formal reply. So if you'll indulge me that this could be the formal reply and uh, for any past governors in the room, protocol has been observed. <laughs> it's impossible to think of past Rotary International President Royce Abbey without seeing a smiling face reflecting a genuine caring from deep within his huge heart or feeling the incredible warmth of welcome from his robust handshake. Royce is a man amongst men and with his beautiful Jean, a friend to all. John and I are humbled and incredibly privileged that he's chosen to include us in those friendships. When Royce, as Rotary International President in 1988-89, chose the theme, put life into Rotary, your life, he was reflecting his own personal values. He invited us to embrace those values and in doing so, 
to change our world. Charles S. Lauer, an author and businessman, once said, leaders don't force people to follow. They invite them on a journey. Royce, the ultimate leader, has taken each of us on a great rotary journey. And for me, as for many of you, that journey has been life-changing. In blissful ignorance, my entry into Rotary as the just elected president of a newly chartered club was at best irritating and at worst, worst inflammatory to Rotarians grappling with the uh, changes from Council on Legislation allowing women into Rotary. As the bell rang for participants to go into the plenary hall for my first district assembly, one of the Rotarians turned around and said to me, all the women are in the kitchen, love. <laughs> I won't tell you some of the other comments. <laughs> When I hesitatingly mentioned that I was actually a Rotarian and took my place in the hall, you could have shot a cannon round me, not a person within 15 seats. I had not known of the angst of the situation and it was a bit of a shock. I wasn't sure that this Rotary was actually for me. But Royce heard of the situation and he arranged that he and I should meet. Now you know what it means to be summoned by Royce. <laughs> he talked to me about the role of a Rotarian and the impact that he or she could make he talked of the experiences he had had, of the sights he had seen, of the people whose lives had changed because of a Rotarian's actions. And he said to me, if I had any problems, I was to tell any of those who had any issues that they should ring my mentor. He said, um, by the way, I'm your mentor. <laughs> I could not go wrong. We all have anxieties of one sort or another at various times along our Rotary Road, sometimes large, sometimes small. Through his actions, Royce taught me that mentoring is so important to all Rotarians. Quite simply, he changed my life. He removed any apprehensions I might have had and instead freed me up to be able to learn and love the experience that was the wonderment of Rotary. His actions developed within me an absolute passion for leadership development, for bringing the very best out of every single person we meet and which impacted my Rotary life and my working life and my personal life. Through these years, Royce has continued that gentle mentoring, always encouraging, always nudging me to disregard obstacles, always joyful at success. In doing so, Royce has taught me the meaning of true leadership. 
Over the years, our friendship grew. Rotary conversations were interspersed with family ones. We shared many high points and sometimes some sad lows. We gained insight into the who and the why of Royce, the incredible war hero, of Royce, the proud husband, father and grandfather, Royce, the Rotarian. It was some years before Royce told me that the significant turning point in his Rotary life had been right at the start of the Rotary journey. You see, I did listen, Royce. <laughs> when the great Sir Angus Mitchell had taken time to welcome you into Rotary and teach you its joys. Royce and Jean had dropped in to see John and I on their way to the holiday house at Anglesey. The tea kettle was barely on when Royce asked why I hadn't yet stood for district governor. He did this at a time when I was resisting requests mightily from my club to stand for the role, citing the fact that my mother and both of John's parents had serious health issues, John and I were working full time and a little bit more. I was on far too many community committees and boards and our children were spread across the world all very, very good reasons not to take on anything else. Royce wasn't buying any of the protestations. Relating the story to me about Angus Mitchell, he was encouraging me to step up despite the challenges. He was reminding me that Rotarians have a job to do to change the lives of others, to spread Rotary's message to the wider world, to put service above self. No was not an option, and nor has it ever been for Royce himself. How often have we all seen it, and seeing it again today? When we're flagging with tiredness, Royce is still there, pushing himself almost beyond his limits, but rarely showing it. Royce, you are an inspiration. You are my inspiration. Royce is loved by us all, and I stand proudly as one of his most ardent admirers. For me, the words that immediately come to mind as I think about Royce and his incredible achievements are, he truly stands a man of greatness. Scottish philosopher Thomas Carlyle said, no great man lives in vain. The history of the world is but a biography of great men. Rotarians across the world applauded Royce as their president 25 years ago. The world still applauds you, Royce, for you stand here as our great man. You have written a magnificent legacy in the sands of time. You have shaped much in the world, but most of all, you have allowed us to be your friend. How incredibly honoured are we? So in a break from protocol, I'm going to ask you to charge your glasses and to please join with me and raise your glasses for a toast to a great leader, a great Rotarian, a great humanitarian, Rotary International President, 8889, Royce 
Abbey to Rosen. Kathy, how beautifully, um, how beautifully put, um, and uh, uh, to uh, to respond, I'll call on uh, David Abbey to uh, to do so. David is chair of the Royce and Jane Abbey uh, Scholarship Committee. I invite you to uh, to respond. Thank you. <clears throat> Please excuse my husky voice. It's, uh, we'll get there. To past district international director and current trustee Ian Risley and Juliet, and Juliet, district governor Ross Butterworth and cousin Anne, <laughs> past and present officers of Rotary International, Rotarians and guests. Thank you for your attendance today and thank you to the Rotary Club of Essendon for honouring Royce and Jean in this way. Now, I'll keep to my notes. Firstly, an apology for Royce and Jean's non-attendance. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. There goes a whole paragraph. Uh, Dad's made it clear to me that his time for speaking and performing is over. Uh, he'll leave it to others. I run my race and I'll sit back. His initial reaction was not to attend maybe leave the door ajar just a little. Uh, Mum and Dad were not coming until Friday, and Friday afternoon they said, well, let's leave the decision until Sunday morning. Uh, we were driving down about an hour out of Melbourne to pick Mum and Dad up, and we got a call from Mum saying, Dad's still in bed, he's not well, he won't be coming. OK, we'll call in anyway to say hello and pass on our best wishes. Uh, Dad met us at the door fully dressed. <laughs> Um, here they are. Can you help me out? Um, at 91, is it reasonable to use a walker to get about in public? Hands up. Yes. Yes. Um, would you let Royce and Jean know that using a walker for a bit of stability is expected and to be encouraged? Uh, they won't listen to their family. Uh, they're concerned that people will think they're getting old. And it's not, can I tell you, it's not just Dad. <laughs> 1988 89 was quite a year, as were the years leading up to it. What an honour for Royce and Jean, for our family, for the Rotary Club of Essendon, for the district, and for Australia. And for all window shades manufacturers. <laughs> which is Dad's rotary vocation still listed on RI websites. <laughs> Window Shades Manufacturers Unite. OK, can I share a few reflections and recollections about that year? There were many discussions around the household before Dad put his name up. He garnered support from all members of the family, and I can recall him saying, I'd never forgive myself if I didn't give it a go. Uh, there was some resistance. When the decision was made to actually give it a go, the members of the Rotary Club of Essendon had to formally nominate Royce to stand as a candidate, and this happened at a meeting of the Rotary Club of Essendon. The vote was not unanimous. There was one hand raised in dissent. Yes, it was Mum. <laughs> I think over the years that she has forgiven him. <laughs> and just how do you choose a theme for a year? A theme which more than a million Rotarians will review, question and hopefully adopt. The theme of put life into Rotary, your life, and various alternatives were discussed at length over the dinner table at Greenvale before those words were settled on. Of course, put life into Rotary, your life, later became put your wife into Rotary. <laughs> <laughs> it 
as this was the year Rotary International formally voted to remove the word male from membership criteria, albeit with opposition from Australian delegated, delegates who voted against the motion, uh, much to Dad's disgust. The 1988 RI convention at Philadelphia was memorable for a lot of reasons but especially the Essendon Rotarians wearing crocodile Dundee hats, <laughs> holding a large sign in the auditorium which yelled, good on your Royce. <laughs> I just wonder where that sign is now. I can remember it. For mum and dad, the year involved having a home base in Chicago, constant travel. I can still picture the world map in dad's study with pins and strings indicating cities visited and flights taken. He gave up part way through. It was impossible. He met heads of state all around the world. And at home, I have a plaque signed by a young governor from Arkansas, President Clinton, as he became. And there's also the photographs of mum and dad in the White House in the Oval Office. Rotary was also playing a role in the Soviet Union's glasnost with Royce and Rotarians being at O'Hare Airport to meet and host a plane load of visiting Soviet emerging leaders, symbolising the end of the decades of mistrust and the end of the Cold War. Being on hand to re-establish clubs in Soviet bloc countries after a hiatus of many decades, and visiting China to champion polio plus vaccinations in that country. The list goes on and on and on. It was a monumental year for Rotary, for Polio Plus and for the world, which at that time was going through significant change and realignment. Rotary was playing a role in world affairs. But let's move on to something a bit more current. At the end of Royce's year as president, the district governors of 1988-89 decided they wanted to leave a legacy of some kind. And the Royce and Jean Abbey Endowed Fund was established within the Rotary Foundation. The fund has grown and interest derived now finances the Royce and Jean Abbey Scholarship, now known as the Royce and Jean Abbey Vocational Training Team. For more than 15 years, the scholarship program has sponsored teachers, foresters, farmers, community leaders of all kinds from the Asia Pacific region who spend three months in Australia undertaking training and acquiring skills in their particular fields. These are skills they have taken back for the betterment of their communities. It's a grassroots program looking to give opportunities not to the high-flying academics with a string of qualifications, but rather to the local community leaders playing a hands-on role. The award entails a donation to the Royce and Jean Abbey Endowed Fund of $1,000. There have been over 200 Royce Abbey awards bestowed. Many more than $200,000 has been donated to the foundation. And on behalf of Royce and Jean, I congratulate the Rotary Club of Essendon, in particular, and in particular, Roger Leesk for the initiative and drive which has made the Royce Abbey Award such a success. Now, <laughs> now back to the task at hand, back to Cathy. Uh, as it's my role to formally thank her for her words and I've been a little bit sidetracked. One of Royce's many talents is his ability to inspire and motivate. Cathy's enthusiasm and her contribution to Rotary and to her community is evident. She readily acknowledges, as you've heard, that Royce motivated her to commit herself in the way she has. She's a fan, as you might have picked up. Cathy was a member of our scholarship committee for less than two years. Her commitments made it impossible for her to attend regular meetings and to contribute as she would have liked. But in her short term on the committee, she certainly expressed her opinions, and we all listened. <laughs> At one point, she made, passed the comment that she thought that the basis of the award was too narrow. Why limit it to members of less than five years standing? There are plenty of other Rotarians who have been inspired by Royce Abbey who would be honoured to wear the Royce Abbey awardee badge, she said. We listened. After resistance from a few committee members, uh, me included, I discussed extending the criteria with Royce. I said it was Cathy's idea which helped. <laughs> uh, Cathy, can I let you in on a little secret? Uh, Dad is a fan. <laughs> uh, 
With Royce and the committee's blessing, the Rotary Club of Essendon agreed to extend the criteria to enable all Rotarians showing commitment and enthusiasm to be eligible to become a Royce Abbey awardee. And for that, we thank you, Cathy. Cathy, thank you for your presentation this afternoon. It embodies and explains what an influence Royce has been to Rotarians in their lives in Rotary and also in their lives outside of Rotary. And as a way of saying thank you, and as a way of recognising your enthusiasm and your commitment, the Royce and Jean Abbey Scholarship Committee and the Rotary Club of Essendon are proud to present you with a Royce Abbey Award. <laughs> Congratulations. and thank you very much. You got me. <laughs> I said to David at one stage when I was passionately uh, pursuing the extension of the award that there is no honour in my personal life that would be greater than to be a recipient of an award in name of two of the most outstanding human beings ever to come on this earth. That you've done this, I'm, I'm copsmacked. <laughs> I, 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 I moved beyond words and I can tell you I will become the even more fiercer advocate <laughs> than I've been in the past. Thank you. Thank you. How wonderful is that? Um, fellow Rotarians and friends, please enjoy fellowship while uh, Maine uh, is served and we'll be back uh, shortly. He served Rotary International as uh, District Governor and as a member of the World uh, Affairs South Pacific Committee, uh, the World Community Services Program Task Force and the Rotary Recreational and Fellowship Task Force. Uh, as a member of the Australian Polio Eradication Private Sector Campaign, Ian received the Regional Services Award for a polio-free world in 2003. Would you please help me welcome Ian to the podium, please. Well, thank you very much, President Boris. That, that was a long time ago. I'd, I'd forgotten most of that. <laughs> a few things have happened since. Oh, there you go. Good afternoon. Uh, what a pleasure to see you all on this very exciting occasion. I travel the world a little bit these days. Um, mostly Rotary, and some people denote a slight accent and they try, they enjoy trying to guess where it's from. Now, accents are funny things, aren't they? Um, you don't think you have one, but everyone else can pick an Aussie accent a mile away, or so they think. And when they say, as, as a lady in Evanston recently did, uh, where am I from? Is it England or Australia? And I've taken to saying New Zealand. Um, <laughs> And Juliet is horrified at that, um, 
two reasons, I think. Probably because my Kiwi accent is so terrible, and um, probably because it crashingly fails the four-way test, and as a past history governor, that's what she does. But there you go. But it is amazing when long-term Rotarians learn that I'm Australian, how many of them go out of their way to tell me how much past President Royce and Jean mean to them. And in a world made up of many high-profile, charismatic type people, celebrities, Royce and Jean are clearly, as Bruce McAvenny would say, special. And it's interesting that Royce's board of directors when he was president contained four other members who subsequent, subsequently became presidents of Rotary International. And they are his successor as president, Hugh Archer, his treasurer, Louise G.I., who I saw a couple of weeks ago and sends his best to you, Jonathan Maggiagbi and Jim Lacey. So it's apparent that Royce has that that gift for leadership that encourages and motivates others to follow his example, which is what Cathy was saying earlier. Now, presidency, I'm here to tell you, has its challenges. Now, when Royce was president, and times were tough when Royce was president, uh, not, not these, uh, these silver tails that they have now, times were tough in those days, Royce. And his office had a leaking roof. And apparently, whenever it rained heavily, the staff would go around and get buckets and place them strategically to catch the drips that were coming through the floor. That's through the ceiling, no, not through the floor. And one day Royce came into his office after there was a storm the previous night and found that the ceiling had collapsed onto his desk, fortunately without him there. Now Royce should be pleased to know that now, as a result of careful fiscal prudence, we can now afford to maintain the building properly. You'd be pleased to know that. All leadership has a way of bringing you back to earth with a bit of a thud. As Royce was coming back to Australia just after his year of presidency was finished, he used his RI credit card one last time at the airport to discover, to his embarrassment, that the authority had already been cancelled. <laughs> and that great Rotarian from New Zealand, Bill Boyd, tells an interesting story about being at an airport in Australia when he was president, wearing his theme jacket and feeling appropriately important. And a little old lady noting the colour of his jacket, which those of you uh, will remember was uh, sort of a, a, a quantity sort of colour, came up to him and said, are you the person who arranges the wheelchairs? <laughs> I don't think that happened to you, Royce, I think. And there are many stories that come out about Rotary leaders. I wonder how many of them are, are true and how many of them have been embellished upon to the point of being apocryphal. But one is that when Royce was district governor of 980, or was it 980 in those days? Yeah. Mm. Or 280. See, I'm... I'm <laughs> isn't it great in Rotary when you're still young at 66? Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> anyway, when Royce was district governor, then president was James Conway. And he visited Melbourne. And Royce took him up to Wielden for some R&R. &R. And on the way back, they were pulled over for speeding. I think Royce was driving, I understand. And of course, this exposed President James to another element of true Australian life. And apparently, uh, the way I hear the story, the policeman recognised Royce from a Rylar or thereabouts that he had attended. But he gave you a ticket anyway, which... <laughs> So it was the four-way test all over again. Now, Royce had a, a great love of the Rotary programs aimed at youth, and he was chairman of the RI Youth Committee. And past president, Diane Fisher, who is here uh, in the corner, an appropriate spot for you, Diane, in the corner, from the Rotary Club of, of Templestowe, told me about a, an inspirational address that Royce gave to the incoming district Rotaract representatives, of which she was one, back in 1985. Diane, you must have been three at the time. His topic was, uh, was leadership and his energy, his enthusiasm and his inspiration had a profound impact on Diane. In particular, his message that opportunity is what you create and if you wait for one to appear, then you wait for a long time, remains in her memory to this day. 
And also memorable was a quote that Royce gave at the time from the sixth president of the USA, John Quincy Adams, and I, I put this down to quote back to you today. This answers the question that Royce posed to the Rotor Actors as to what is a leader. And it says, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and become more, then you're a leader. And I would say that Royce epitomises leadership in every single little thing that he does. Now, Rotary is a very international organisation, and this brings it with it some challenges for the leadership. And one of the first directors, uh, first year directors, I should say, when Royce was president on his board, was a lawyer from Kano in Nigeria named Jonathan Magiagbi who subsequently became Rotary International's first African president. Now, Meji Agbi is not an easy name to pronounce. And when Royce asked Jonathan to speak at the International Assembly to all of the incoming district governors that year, he was determined to get the pronunciation correct. And by all reports, he practised intensely. Meji Agbi, Meji Agbi, go to bed, Meji Agbi, Meji Agbi. So when the time came for Royce to introduce Jonathan, and the name came out at nothing like Maggi Agbi, <laughs> the entire board as assembled dissolved into laughter to the amazement of the governor's elect who were assembled there expecting a much more straight and, uh, and precise performance from their leadership. And that's just one of the occasions being on the board with President Royce that, that Jonathan recalls with great fondness and he asked me to pass on his best wishes to our honoured couple tonight and all of his, uh, his friends down under. So as you'd expect, the Abbeys were and continue to be enormously popular within, within the Rotary family. As one staff member said to me recently, Royce and Jean were just fun to be around during the presidential year. A lady by the name of Betty Rosansky, some of you may know Betty, is a long serving employee in presidential services in Evanston. And she told me about a time in Nashville when they had a meeting and Royce had been out of office for a few years. By then, it had become the norm for presidents to have a song to match their theme. And Royce, being a music man, said with a straight face that he proposed to run again for president just so that he could have a theme song this time. And this got me wondering, what tune do you think Royce would have had? <laughs> The Bulldogs, I doubt it, he'd choose something that was a winner. <laughs> so I've given this matter some thought. Let me suggest a couple of options to you. How about that famous Fats Waller song, Ain't Misbehaving? Could that be, Royce? Jean is shaking her head as well, okay. How about uh, Bob Dylan's The Times They Are A-Changing? Because I know that Royce has always been a, a very innovative thinker. Maybe how about that 70s classic, Lean On Me? Because Royce has always been a person on whom you can rely. Now I thought about this a lot and in the end, I thought it would probably be the tune for the jingle for Dural Leeds, which I'm old enough to remember from the radio in the 50s and 60s. I was sharing this with Alistair before, he's amazed that I remember this, but I'm sure people of my age can recall Dural Leeds for a job well done. They're the finest shadings under the sun. <laughs> I didn't sing, notice. Uh, the, there was no Greg Ross up here, otherwise I'd clear the room. Yeah. Now, Royce was, uh, was very inclusive with the Rotary staff. Alice Baylor is about to retire. In fact, I think this week she has retired from the senior staff after 27 years at Rotary. And in her office, she has a banner from the Rotary Club of Essendon sitting up on her shelf and she told me she visited Royce's club. I presume it was actually in this room back in 93. Would it have been here? Oh, yes. Yeah, it would have been here. And she told me she visited during the convention in 93 when she was here. Now her strongest memory of that evening is that the meeting went for at least four hours and it got rowdier and rowdier <laughs> as the meeting went along. It's hard to imagine the Essendonians, isn't it? Yeah, impossible. Four years, uh, four hours at least it went. Now my, f my first personal experience of the, of the Abbey magic was when I was district governor elect way back in 1998. And there was a meeting of some kind at International House. 
And the gathering was outside in the garden. And for once, I was the last to arrive. Now, I say that for the benefit of my wife, who was always the last to arrive. <laughs> and there were about 40 people present. And as I walked up, Royce turned around, saw me and said, Ian, how are you? Now, I was thunderstruck. Of all of the people who were likely to be there, how could this Rotary legend possibly know who in the hell I was? And I told Jean this story a few years ago, in fact, in the, at the governor exchange between Bernie Walsh and John Davis that took place up the road in Nidri or somewhere. And I, I told Jean the story at the time. And she played it down and said, nah, he probably caught a glimpse of your name badge. But in fact, I wasn't wearing one. And I was talking to David about this earlier. And he said, no, 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 Dad's memory is appalling. <laughs> but sitting next to him is a person with an amazing memory. <laughs> And so if you arrive, Royce will see you coming and he'll say, who's that, who's that? <laughs> Jen will say, Ian's someone from over there and then, oh Ian, how are you? Yes, good. So, so I had this, this image of, of a man with a photographic memory and, uh, and I've been assured by David and others today that that's to totally incorrect. Mm. Now, Royce was a, was a huge supporter of the Rotary Foundation, as well, of course, as being a trustee for six years, as the term of office was in those days. Now, the endowment fund, known for a while as the permanent fund, was established under his Rotary leadership in 1988-89. The objective of the endowment fund is to establish a corpus that will continue to grow with donations and earnings, and only a small portion of it is spent on programs. And from modest beginnings in 1988, that fund is now actual cash in hand of 290 million and rising. Expectancies from bequests uh, expects that to double within the next decade. So we're talking serious stuff. It may seem like a lot of money, and it is, but we need to keep it in perspective. Um, I, I speak at uh, breakout sessions at conventions and so on because uh, I'm an accountant for my sins and uh, they need somebody to talk about finance. And at a breakout session at the New Orleans Convention, talking about the endowment fund, I compared it to the foundation at the University of Oklahoma. Now I chose the University of Oklahoma to, as a contrast, mainly because I had access to the size of their financial information through Ron Burton, now President Ron who used to run that foundation. Now, the University of Oklahoma Foundation at that time has a corpus of over a billion dollars. So I posed the question to the assembled audience, why should a university foundation, and we're not talking Harvard here, have so much money, much more than our Rotary Foundation? And in the question and answer session that followed, a Rotarian from the US, and in fact from uh, Oklahoma, sought to answer my rhetorical question. She said that the, uh, the, the Okies have a higher endowment fund than Rotary because they have a better football team. <laughs> Sad but true. So therefore, do not support your football team, support the Rotary Foundation. As Cathy's already mentioned, Royce's presidency saw the momentous occasion for Rotary in that the COL motion allowing women to join Rotary Clubs was passed in that year. Royce was one of the directors, the board of directors, who supported the motion. And in fact, the board of directors put it forward. History shows that many of his earlier uh, contemporaries amongst Rotary, Rotary leadership, frankly, had to be dragged screaming into the modern world to accept reality. And that's to our uh, eternal shame, but that's a fact of life. You have to remember that the proposal to admit women to membership had failed at the five previous councils on legislation because it didn't have board support. They're every three years, so that tells you how long it was spread out there. And I once read a quote attributed to Royce on this subject in which he said that at the time the COL item was passed in 1989, he had already met many women Rotarians because after the Supreme Court case in California, there were tens of thousands of women Rotarian members in the USA. 
And here is the quote from Royce. It was good to know that they could now be joined by leading business and professional women from other countries, including my own. So it was leadership from people like Royce that made it happen, and very important. One of Royce's many trips in his period as president-elect was, as was mentioned earlier, to the People's Republic of China. And uh, David mentioned this earlier. His visit paved the way for rotary programs to be accepted in China, especially, especially Polio Plus. It's a matter of history now that a few years later, when Royce was a trustee of the Rotary Foundation, over 100 million Chinese children were immunised against polio in one day. Of course, 100 million one day. Now, that's happened before in, or since in, in India, but at the time, this is massive stuff. 100 million children immunised against polio in one day. And of course, polio is now well gone from China. Well, until the next plane arrives with someone carrying it. And just about the rest of the world as well. But however, we have to understand that while it remains endemic in just three countries, the danger of it spreading to other places is real and absolute. As we've seen in the last year, in the Horn of Africa in particular, the disease has been detected in sewage samples in Israel and in Egypt. No cases yet. But further, unfortunately, cases of what is now confirmed as polio have recently been found in Syria, where there hasn't been a case since 1999. And it is believed, and they are checking this out, it's come from Pakistan to Egypt, over the border into Syria, and that's how it happens. So while it exists anywhere, it's capable of existing everywhere. So if the legacy of those pioneers who worked so hard in the early stages of our campaign is not to be wasted, and Royce is at the forefront of this, all Rotarians, every single one of us, have to keep up the fight against polio. Royce also worked on strengthening relations with the Soviet Union during his year of presidency. Again, David mentioned that earlier. Hosting a visit to Evanston of 160 young Soviet leaders heading to a meeting in Philadelphia. He gave the leader of the delegation a Paul Harris Fellow recognition to pass on to President Gorbachev. And Royce was subsequently invited to visit Moscow but the Russian elections there got in the way. And the following year, R.I. President Hugh Archer, who succeeded Royce, presided over the chartering of the Rotary Club of Moscow, a result of the groundwork that Royce and his board had already undertaken. Royce's convention. Rotary International has a convention every year. There's a little event taking place in Sydney next year you might be interested in. Well, in Royce's year, it was in Seoul, South Korea, in May 1989. And the attendance at that convention was almost 39,000 Rotarians. Very close to a record at the time. And in fact, it's still, I think, third highest attendance in history. I'm visiting Seoul in a couple of weeks to inspect the current uh, convention facilities because our RI president nominee, Ravi Ravindran from Sri Lanka, is having the 2016 convention there back in Seoul. I have the privilege of being his convention chairman, so I'll have great pleasure in pointing out the obvious Australian connection to the history of Rotary in Seoul. And on that subject, Ravi mentioned to me that Royce is a huge inspiration to him as well and passes on his best to you. And I told Ravi that we're happy to share our, our superstars with the rest of the world. <laughs> After his presidency, Royce served a full six-year term as a trustee of the Rotary Foundation, a hard but rewarding task as TRF chairman. And to quote him, I'm quoting back to you today, Royce, just in case you've forgotten this, okay. The, the rewards of seeing the positive results, of seeing the difference that can be made in the lives of people, of knowing that what Rotary has done through the Foundation brings new hope, a new chance in life, makes it all worthwhile. That's our foundation, and that's Royce. The strength today of, of the Rotary Foundation, with record contributions to the annual fund, to a growing endowment fund, a battle against polio that is rapidly approaching victory, and great support for peace and conflict resolution at the Rotary Peace Centres, 
is the result of the expertise and inspiration provided by earlier leaders like Royce. Finally, a comment on Rotary presidential themes. What an appropriate theme Royce chose for his year. Put life into Rotary, your life. Has there ever been a person who has put as much life into Rotary as Royce? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a, a pleasure to be here with you today to honour one of my genuine heroes, the President of Rotary International in 1988-89, Albert Henry Royce Abbey. Bravo, Royce. Thank you, Anne. Can I call on uh, past President Shirley Cook to... Uh, do a vote of thanks, please. It gives me very great pleasure to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to Ian Risley for his presentation today to celebrate our very own Royce Abbey's 25th anniversary as Rotary International World President. Thank you for sharing those stories today about our Royce's leadership, Ian. I'm really pleased that Royce took the opportunity to vote for women into Rotary because otherwise I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet this great man. So thank you very much, Royce. Uh, Royce's qualities that were outlined by Ian have been demonstrated at a local club level. Royce has been a member of the Rotary Club of Essendon and always has provided leadership and mentoring to members of our club. So thank you, Royce, and thank you for sharing those, Ian. We've been inspired by Ian's presentation, which was delivered with passion, enthusiasm and humour. Ian, I'm sure Royce and Jean would like me to pass on their gratitude for your kind words. I think we'll all agree that today we have just witnessed a presentation made by a future World Rotary International President. <laughs> and if you'd like to come forward, uh, I have uh, a very small uh, gift that I'd like you to uh, accept as appreci appreciation of our thanks for today. So please join with me in thanking Ian. Juliet will enjoy this very much, thank you. <laughs> well, Ian, Juliet's not missing out either, so Juliet, if you'd like to come forward, we've got a small presentation as well. Jean, we also have a presentation for you, and if you'd like to remain seated, I'll bring it over to you. In recognition of your ongoing support of Royce and the ideals of Rotary, we'd just like to present you with a small gift. Right, now I'd like to call on uh, District Governor Ross uh, Butterworth, please. You know, one of the absolute pleasures of uh, district governors is to visit clubs, to witness the work they do, but can I say the work of the Royce and Jean Abbey Scholarships Program has been a, an absolute honour to witness for something in the order of about 10 years now, and I know my own club has supported that for that period of time, and can I congratulate the club on supporting recognition of a truly great man. Certainly, from my respect, in our own Rotary District, there's people that go about their own service to others without any fuss or thought of personal recognition. And at times those people are not only uh, are not Rotarians, but they're committed to ensuring that our district leadership will be maintained at the highest level so that our member clubs can continue to do the good work in changing lives that they do. Within the family of Rotary, 
most people appreciate the time and effort that the district governor commits in managing a large district such as District 9800. But what is not always recognised is that the, fam the wider family of the district governor in the main is prepared to put their normal life on hold at least for a minimum of three years to devote to the many and varied demands of Rotary International. In Rotary Protocol, the partner of the Rotary International office bearer is given the same status as the office bearer. However, while the District Governor may be congratulated and even recognised for their successful stewardship of the District during their tenure as District Governor, the contribution of their partner makes to the success is often unrecognised. It's good to note that in some instances their home club during the year of performance as District Governor is recognised and the important contribution the partner makes in the success of the year and their, year, their partner's rotary career. Until recently it has not been possible for our district to say thank you to these partners in any tangible way for their contribution and their commitment to the ongoing success of our district that they and their family have made over that three year period. Therefore on this special occasion our Rotary District 9800 we would like to give full recognition to the efforts and the contribution that Jean Abbey has made to our district with a Paul Harris Fellow with two sapphires. And could I ask Jean to come forward and could I also ask my wife Annette to come forward to assist me with the presentation. Jean, it is our pleasure to pass on the well wishes of our district and to give full recognition of the efforts you made during Royce's year as district governor and secondly for his work as the Rotary International President, President 88, 89. is a surprise and I thank you very much. We've enjoyed Rotary over how many years? Over 50, over 50 something, <laughs> well over 50, about 55, 56 and I've enjoyed it all and I do miss it now because we can't seem to get here but anyway it's been a great afternoon. I'm surprised to see so many <laughs> faces that I know <laughs> but uh, I'd miss it, but uh, there comes a day, wouldn't you? Just can't go on, at our age anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. Absolutely wonderful. Before uh, making some acknowledgements, um, I'd like to uh, read a letter that was uh, received. Um, would you kindly express my apologies to PRIP Royce and others gathered for the great milestone lunch gathering today. I would have loved to have been part of the show. I look back fondly on my DG year with what I achieved under the stewardship of Royce. From past District Governor Fred Marsh, Perth Western Australia, one of the blue boys. <laughs> In closing, uh, let me say I uh, want to acknowledge um, with uh, great thanks everybody who was here today to share in uh, uh, this momentous occasion. Um, I'd like to
pay uh, particular tribute to uh, two individuals who work behind the scenes to make this happen, of a committee of, uh, of a number, Roger Leask and Jordan Babenko. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and uh, might I add, I'm even more proud now to uh, call myself a uh, Essendon Rotarian. So uh, with having uh, said that, please enjoy the balance of the afternoon, enjoy the uh, fellowship and uh, look forward to uh, next time. All the best. Thank you. I thought it was first class. I think it covered the program as we know it. And they've made comments that uh, I think will last for a long, long time. I wish everybody a good and happy future. All the very best. Thank you.